This is Dennis Rollins. Dennis is over for <laughs> the uh, Guinness Cork Jazz Festival. He's flown in from Manchester this morning. Where's the gig last night? No. Oh. Preparation last night. No, preparation last <laughs> night. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, the Guinness Cork Jazz Festival is coming up the October Bank Holiday weekend. There is a massive lineup, including Dennis. But Dennis, I suppose one of the questions that I wanted to ask you, I was thinking about this on the way over, was what's jazz? See, I told you it'd be an one. <laughs> that's a great question. And, yeah. you know, jazz means a lot of things to different people. Mm -hmm. um, um, I feel that jazz is... I feel that jazz is, is the ability to um, take um, a music, improvise, improvise, and stretch it beyond the bounds of what it's normally known. Okay. It's quite, and quite it, a it broad is, question. It's so a very difficult question, but I, I was on your website uh, yes. over the weekend. You have some... Three albums, isn't it? Today? Three albums, yeah. Three albums today. You, people can listen to some of your music on your website. It's a brilliant sound, but it's not something that I would have said is jazz. Um, that you, yes. And I don't mean that in any sort yeah. of bad way. I just mean that there's such a variety of sounds there. You don't yes. seem to be limiting yourself yes. to it's a smoky jazz club and I must play yeah. like this. Yes. I mean, that, that, I would look at that more as a traditional jazz straight ahead mm -hmm. bebop sound that, that what you're describing to me there yeah but you know i come from a from a culture where dance music where dance music is or is still prevalent yeah. um and you also have to look at the fact that originally way back in the 1920s jazz was a dance music um, so, you know, you look at the 20s, you're coming into the 30s with the swing era, still dance music. Mm -hmm. And then you come in 50s, 60s, and then we're moving into the bebop era, which, you know, it, it started moving more into, if you like, into, into the intellect for me. In, Absolutely. In well, I mean, I suppose television and movies would have glamorized it as Absolutely. being the smoky and the clicking fingers and whatever. But anybody who's been to the festival down in Cork will know oh. that it's getting up out of your seat and it is dancing. And that's what it is, you know. And, you know... You look at um, the youth of today, or even the youth of yes, yesterday, and you know, I try and make that connection between jazz and dance. I, I try, I try and m just bridge that gap. Now, I can do intellectual, intellectual with with um, <clears throat> with my music, but with Bad Bone and Co. That wasn't the idea. The idea was to connect to um, ordinary, if you like, ordinary, just ordinary, or the ordinary man on the street, someone who hasn't heard jazz before, and connect to that person and just introduce them to jazz, make them feel that they've heard jazz, make them feel that they've heard this style. You know, they turn on the radio and they've heard the beats, they've heard the kinds of grooves. I wanted to introduce um, jazz to that kind of beat and so get closer to the general public with that. And where did the love of jazz come from for you? Well it started um, when I was, it started way back when I was 14. Mm -hmm. um, I, when I first started playing the instrument um, I first started in brass bands and orchestras. In South Yorkshire? In South Yorkshire. Yeah. Brass bands in South Yorkshire. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I was introduced um, to the local jazz association, the Doncaster Jazz Association, um, where I played a Count Basie, Count Basie number. I can't remember which one it was. But I played a Count Basie chart and I heard um, as, as um, an introduction to the music in the band, um, the, the, the leader played um, a big band chart on the stereo. And that was my first introduction to jazz. And had you been playing the trombone before? I had, yes, just for a little while, maybe ah. a year. And um, what made you pick up an instrument like the trombone? Well, uh, the it's story, not exactly something you I bring know, to I know. Bring to parties. Well, <laughs> the <laughs> thing is, the thing is, at school, at school, um, uh, my brother played trombone before me. Okay. And he played for two years before I even picked it up. Right. But within that two years that he played, I used to sit and watch him in the bands. I used to sit and watch um, 
watch the slide positions. I used to just clock the notes on the on the music, and it just basically um, stemmed from there. I I became the jealous sibling. I can do that. So when he got his new trombone, I got the old beat up one, right? Um, the cast off, right? And um, it started from there. And what's he doing now? He plays with the Jules Holland band. <laughs> okay, he so he's still playing. Yeah, so he's still, he's still playing. Excellent. He's still playing professionally. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've just both taken different routes. You know, I've decided to sort of go the soloist route and mm -hmm. have my own groups. He's, yeah. he's happy to stay in Jules Holland's band. So, but hey, that, but that's hey, it. playing with you some know. of the top musicians yes. as well. It's, um, it's coming up to Cork time, as we said. Yes. Now, you were in Japan at the start of this year. Yes. And you're, uh, you're coming back to Cork for the third time, isn't it? Yes. Is there a big, different cultural audience reaction to jazz music around the world, do you find? Or is, or is it one of those horrendously... Um, cliché unifying factors where we'll all just get up and dance to a good tune. Well, <laughs> well I don't think everyone gets up and dances to, to a good tune, you know. Some people do like the, the, you know, some, you know, some cultures do like that intellectual thing, but at its core, everyone wants to enjoy themselves. Everyone wants to, wants to, you know, feel that connection with the band and feel that the band is actually giving, um, and again, I'm fortunate that I've been in groups where, you know, where you, the band will give to right. an audience, not just play, but yeah. give, and then you get that back um, as a musician. Um, I mean, being in Japan is fantastic because the enthusiasm is almost, I don't want to say over the top, but it's quite, quite overwhelming, okay. and, um, whereas in, in, in South London or something, it'll be a little more impress me or right. you know <laughs> in England in general it's yeah. either impress me or okay that was all right so you know it, it's great to feel the different dynamics of, of audiences around the world and you were commenting that no matter where you are in the world that the Cork Jazz Festival is known absolutely yeah. absolutely and is this part of why you've, you're coming back for the third time well absolutely I mean I'm I'm, I'm absolutely I'm happy to be back with Maceo Parker band as a guest in Maceo Parker's okay. band um, but if it was up to me, I'd be here every year with my own band because <laughs> yeah. I love playing here. Okay. I love being here. And, um, you know, I do hope that one time I can bring my trio here because I feel that it's something that the audiences would love. Yeah. It's just a great festival. As I said, it, it really is well known around the world as an international festival. And that's an international jazz festival. And that's, that's a great thing. What can audiences expect? What can audiences expect from Maisie Parker? From, from Maisie Parker, yeah. I, I or think, from you. Well, you know, I mean, as I said, I'm part of Maisie's yeah. group. And um, Maisie is, um, firstly, as, as everyone knows, he's a legend. Um, I would expect to be off your seats, jumping around, dancing, and just, just uh, being a part of his infectious group, his infectious group and groove. Mm -hmm. um, that's one thing that always knocks me out is how the band can sit on a groove and just make it sizzle, how they connect to an audience in, in such a, a fantastic way. Great soul, great solos. Um, I must say, you know, Maceo um, always says 98% funk, 2% jazz. Okay. He's got more jazz than that. He's got <laughs> more jazz than that. Even though you know, it's almost like he he should he should really um, really change that and put just put the percentage higher than a hundred percent. He's he's got so much jazz and funk, but you know, funk is is what he does, and he really delivers it in in space. So I would expect a great time. People to be off their seats, you know. Stage at the Guinness Cork Jazz Festival, uh, which is the bank holiday weekend. Uh, there's lots of people on, as you said, Maceo Parker, the brand new heavies, who you've also performed with. Yeah, I've yeah, recorded and performed with them for three and a half years. Wow, incredible. Um, the Robert Glasper Experiment and Britain's new jazz supergroup, the Neil Cowley Trio at the Everyman yes. Palace Theatre. People can find out more about uh, the Cork Jazz Festival at corkjazzfestival.com. Well, where can people find out more about you? Yes, um, two places at the moment. Um, if you go to my website, mm -hmm. www.dennis.com, 
dennisrollins.com. Mm -hmm. yep. um, I've got the, all information there, tour dates and um, some music clips and you know news clips and stuff. I've also got um, go to my Facebook um, fan page. Okay. Um, Dennis Rollins fan page um, and. Join the fan page. Please join the fan page. <laughs> like me. <you> know, <laughs> like me, yes. <laughs> Where I have information not only of, you know, um, Backbone and Co, but I also have information about uh, the Velocity, my new Velocity trio. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Maceo Parker's band, you know, and, you know, it's, they're the two main places at the moment. To end the interview, if I asked you to play something on the trombone, what would you choose to play? Gosh, what would I play? Because we're in a room, okay. in an office building, in okay. Dublin. <laughs> I'll, play, um, I'll play something from my second album. Okay. Um, I did a track called Soul Journey. Okay. And so I'll, I'll play a little snippet of Soul Journey. Okay, cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Thanks, David.